Hey guys, welcome back to another Crash Course video by Ink Metal. I'm Anuj, and today we're going to be talking about PID Tuning for Motor Part 2. Today we're going to be getting into the coding example and make a program for PID tuning using the FTC dashboard developed by Roadrunner. Let's get started. So over here, I just have a generic project, and this is what it's sort of going to look like when you download Roadrunner and install FTC lib. So we're in our open mode folder right here in the team code folder, and let's just make a new Java class. So we can call this PID for motor. Okay, perfect. Now I've copy and pasted some of these imports, which we're gonna need soon. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about these. So let's get right into it. Now, first things first, we will be using this as an autonomous name is equal to, let's just say PID test, something like that. Uh, that way it just shows up on our driver station. Um, now, what we also want to do is make this visible on the FTC uh, Roadrunner dashboard. Um, you'll see why in a second, or rather when we're done with the code, but to make sure that visible on the dashboard, you'll put an at config at the top. Uh, now the dashboard's necessary to see how your constants are playing out and sort of make a graph and visualize how your constants are working to reduce your error. Uh, instead of sort of just like changing the constants and then rerunning the whole project. That would take a long time. Um, the dashboard is just an easy way of doing that. So now, uh, of course, we need to do extends linear OP mode, just some generic FTC stuff. Um, and now we need to implement the method. So Android Studio will just do this for me. So there we go. Now we have our run OP mode, add override, everything is pretty much there. So we can get uh, into the coding part of it. Um, so uh, to start, let's just declare the motor that we're going to be using. So DC motor extended motor. That's what we're going to call it. And we're also going to need a few other things. So we're going to need elapsed time timer is equal to new elapsed time. So time is going to be important when we do the mathematics to return the power necessary given error in reference. Um, next, let's make uh, our target position. So this is how far you want your encoder to go when encoder counts. You can change this value, but right now we just have it set at 5,000. All right, um, now let's move into the main run op mode function. So we're gonna go with sample nick and um, drive. Drive is equal to new sample nick and um, drive. Okay, and then we need to pass in hardware map. Next, uh, this is going to be setting up your dashboard. Actually, one thing we do need to do up here is private final FTC dashboard. Dashboard is equal to new or sorry, FTC dashboard dot get instance. So here we're just initializing our FTC dashboard. So now uh, we'll go back into the run of view mode and we'll do telemetry packet packet is equal to new telemetry packet. Um, this is going to be necessary to allow um, you to change the constant values um, on the uh, dashboard itself. Uh, so then dashboard dot set telemetry transmission interval 25 this is just like standard things oh transmission there we go um, then uh, now we'll we're gonna further set up our motor uh, get DC motor extended dot class here we're gonna just name it intake slides because we were actually originally doing this for intake linear slides. Uh, next, 
going to set up the motor a bit more DC motor dot run mode dot stop and reset encoder. Then you will also set the motor to break zero break. There we go. Um, next, we're going to set it to run without encoder. Uh, so this does not like disable the encoder completely uh, from from counting, but it simply send like lets us like send raw motor power. So motor send set mode DC motor dot run mode run without encoder. There we go. And wait for start. Then int target position. We're just sort of repeating what we have up here. That's going to be set to 5000. And there we go. So here we pretty much have our motor set up. Um, next, what we're going to do is work with our constants. So before we do that, we're going to actually have to go back up here outside the run OP mode and make a few variables. So we're going to just start here. So private private double last error equal to zero private double integral sum is equal to zero public static double kp is equal to 0 0.04 and you can actually just copy that and here are the constants that we're defining so right now um, it's actually best practice to leave it at zero, uh, zero point zero. Like those were just the numbers we came across, like that actually worked. And we'll show you how to tune those values. But right now, um, just leave everything at zero for the constants. Now that's pretty much it for the values there. So next, we're gonna go back here into this function and while op mode is active and we will do double power is equal to return power target position motor dot get current position so this function return power is something we still have not made uh, and we're going to make that soon uh, but essentially, before we make that, it'll just make things more complicated. What this function is going to do is take in the target position, so 5,000. That's where we want our motor to go. And it'll take into account the motor's current position, uh, how far it is reaching that in encoder counts. And based on that, and as well based on these constants up here, it will determine the proper power that the motor needs to be set at. So we're just going to continue pretending that this function is made and make it later. Uh, so once we get our power returned, uh, remember this is a loop, so we're always gonna be retrieving that power, um, like what power we need to set our motor to, so that's accurate. And it reaches the target position, does not go over to under. Uh, once we have the power, we are going to do packet.put power, and then power. So packet.put is what allows you to visualize this on the FTC dashboard, and we're going to be doing a few more lines of packet.put. So we're going to put, so we want, this is sort of like the telemetry for dashboard. So we're going to put power, position, get current. There we go. Uh, you can really just put anything you want to see as sort of the telemetry. Um, on the dashboard, so what you want reported. Um, but here, we're just putting the standard stuff that you may want to include. Okay, and then of course you need to do motor.setPower and then set it to the power we just retrieved. And there we go. Uh, last, we need to update the dashboard. Oh, that's not the right function. There we go. Um, oops, send. 
Um, then we will drive go to position and take slides timer kp ki kd target position. All right. So this function is actually specific to our case. Um, so essentially, uh, like that's what our intake linear slides would do. You don't really need this because we're using it with a motor. Um, so yeah. Um, right. So let's get into making the function uh, for the return power. So here we're gonna actually have to use our constants and we'll see how that works out. So we're gonna have to return a double, which is the power, return power, so I just name that. And then double state. So uh, we have reference and state as our parameters. Uh, so reference is gonna be the target position and state is the current position. Um, so with that, you can determine the error. And to do that, you simply subtract state from reference. Then uh, now we're going to get into more of the mathematical stuff using the constants. So let's try that out. Uh, next, we'll do integral sum plus equal error times timer seconds. There are a lot of ways of doing this mathematically, but we just found this to work. Um, error minus last error timer dot seconds and then last error is equal to error timer dot reset and then double output here is where the magic happens you take error times kp that's one constant plus derivative times kd plus integral sum times ki. So now we have, with this line and the ones before it too, we have what we want to set the motor power to. Um, and as you can see, we use all of the three constants, multiplying them by something specific. Um, you can actually take a look at this image. So ki is integral, kp is being multiplied with the error, and then kd is with the derivative. So there we of it. Um, now we'll just return output. Okay, so now we finished our code. Um, as a brief overview, uh, here we're just doing imports, then here we set our constants, always zero first, uh, target position, initialize our dashboard and motor, and the loop, we are constantly updating our dashboard with the power position error while setting our motor to the power given its current target position and current position. So this will all appear on the dashboard, and what the dashboard will look like is this. So it might be this endpoint for you, it might not, but you can check Roadrunner for those details. But essentially, uh, you would go to your file. Um, so here, we just called it working PID for when we unit last time. But what it's going to look like is you're going to be able to run your file from here. You're going to be able to put in your constants here. Um, change anything else here. And then when you do run your file, uh, a graph will show showing your error. Uh, and that's going to be helpful because you can sort of tweak these KP, KI, and KD values based on the error to sort of minimize its oscillations. So that's how the dashboard will work, will work with this. So yeah, essentially that's it for this video. Um, if you like the video, then more videos are going to be on the way. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and thank you for watching.